Remy Ma called out Nikki by name and obliterated her. It was absolute carnage. She disrespected Nikki to her core. And I think the thing that people are ultimately thinking is, why did you not respond to Remy in the same way that you've gone on with Megan? This feeling of people don't recognize me for who I am. People don't respect me for the contribution I'm making to my field. And people have been disrespecting me for a long time and I've had enough. This is something that we can all actually relate to. Welcome back to the Velvet Devotion channel. I am one of your hosts, Mrs. B. I am the second part in the husband and wife duo um, that makes up Velvet Devotion. And yes, as you can see, it is just me today. Um, yes, basically, a few of you may remember that the last video that we did a while back, we announced that we are expecting a child. Um, I am now over nine months pregnant. And yeah, our baby is due pretty much any day now and basically these last few months have been a real transition period for us and essentially we have been really trying to prepare for the birth of our newborn and this is why Mr V isn't here today he has been like a boss working every single day to try and make sure that we are good and we are provided for and so while I'm at home I offered up a suggestion for us to be able to try and get our channel going uh, going again, being a little bit more consistent with our channel. So we're gonna try a few different things. We're gonna try me on camera on my own. Then we're gonna try maybe the two of us doing a voiceover together. And we're just gonna see what works. We're gonna see what you guys like. We're gonna see how this flows. And we're really just gonna, you know, try and make this channel more of a priority um, as we really care about you guys we care about the christian artists that are out there in the world and just the people in general who find our content helpful in some way and we really just feel led to keep going with this um so yeah we're gonna just try some different things and we're gonna see how it goes okay guys so get comfortable and let's get into this video so as you guys can see from the title today, we are gonna be talking about what happens when an artist starts to spiral out of control. We are gonna be covering the Meg Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj drama. We're gonna be talking about what has gone on, why this is sending shockwaves throughout the whole internet, um, why we as Christian artists should even be bothered or caring about this in any way, shape or form. And then we're gonna be discussing how we can avoid these issues. Okay, so for those of you who may not be aware of the situation, we have been in an epic diss battle um, between the two female rappers, Meg Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj. Essentially what's happened is they have both been digging at each other in music for a while now. Then Megan recently dropped a diss track called Hiss and basically the diss track is essentially just disrespected many people in the artist world but also is covering Nicki Minaj. So it seems like Nicki's main issue with everything is basically threefold. One, the fact that Megan has quote unquote betrayed her because of the fact that Nicki helped her in the beginning of Megan's career to get a heads up with everything that's going on to, and Nicki basically supported her and did collaboration with her. And then Megan essentially went behind her back and started working with other people that Nicki does not associate with in a good way. Um, then the second thing I think is the fact that Megan mentioned Nikki's family and spoke on and spoke about that in a negative way but then the third thing is that I think Nikki is just actually appalled that Megan would have the audacity to even speak about anything to do with her and even try and challenge her as the queen of rap considering the fact that Megan has not been in the game as long as Nikki so when we look at these things and we look at the fact that Nikki has just completely seemed to take this extremely badly and seem to be spiraling out of control, we need to ask ourselves why as, as Christians, as Christian artists, why do we even care about this? Like realistically, this is not happening in our community. Why do we care? Simple. 
the world that we live in is in turmoil we are literally seeing people breaking down every day and dealing with things in a way that would never have happened even 50 years ago okay so pop culture is culture the way that people are doing things now especially on social media and the internet has never been done before the extreme versions of feminism that we're seeing the identity politics that is continuously being shoved down our throat um cancel culture vulgarity um just people's mindset just changing and being formed by the pop culture influences of the day so people like Mel megan the stallion people like Nicki minaj they are influencing your children if you have them they are force feeding a lot of this stuff to your children without sometimes us as parents even knowing they are continuously putting us in a situation where we have to battle and figure out how we are going to be working around this as christian people and to be honest even if you're not a christian person these are things that influence you without you necessarily even knowing it so we need to know how to be in this world but not of this world how to deal with these situations and as artists and as artistic people we need to know that this is what we're coming up against when you are a creative person and you are trying to um work in whatever creative field you're in these are the types of people and the types of issues that you are going to come across and you are going to need to know how to deal with it so why has this blown up on the internet simple nikki has proclaimed for the longest time that she is the queen of rap and to be fair to her yes there is a lot in that statement like nikki you cannot deny that she is a talented artist whether you support her or don't support her a lot of christian people know and understand that this person is somebody that has influenced um hip-hop music and the culture in general for at least a couple of decades now so this person i would not say was a godly person i can't speak on their christianity per se because obviously she could say she's a christian i don't know but just from the fruits of what we see we know that this person is not necessarily somebody who is going to have the best influence overall okay but you cannot deny that she is a talented rapper you cannot deny that she has had hit after hit you cannot deny that she is even you know a cultural icon she is definitely all of those things the issue is though is that when you are in a situation where you are putting yourself on a pedestal and saying that you are the queen it is then very apparent when you do not behave in a queenly manner so i think the internet is amazed by a couple of things first of all that Megan would even challenge Nikki in the first place. Then I think we're amazed because Nikki seems to be extremely pressed by this situation. She immediately, as his came out, she immediately got on live and started ranting and raving about how Megan is a terrible person, how she's disrespected her, how all of these things, ranting and raving, ranting and raving, going on and on. And just to be honest with you, she sounded crazy. And I don't think Nikki is crazy, but I think she's come to a point where she's been fed up over a long period of time of people disrespecting her and continuously calling her out of her name. And I think she just kind of went off. I also think that she's probably not surrounded by people who would encourage her in a good way to hold her tongue um and i think the fact that she has responded the way she's responded has made the internet be even more be in even more of a frenzy um i also think the fact that she then after i think over 72 hours was it she basically put out a diss track that said almost the exact same things that she was saying in her internet rant and the diss track was not really that good and even her fans thought it wasn't that good this is something that is shocking to us because we know the queen of rap to be somebody who puts out reasonable music and somebody who seems to be extremely controlled and calculating with what they're doing but now it's like she's had an emotional outburst and that emotional outburst has not equaled out to be anything good for her i also think that there is a massive difference between the way she has handled this situation and the way she handled the situation with the artist remy ma so for those of you who may not know um there is a rapper called remy ma she has been around for 
longer than Nicki Minaj and essentially a few years ago Remy Ma released an absolutely obliterating diss track to Nicki Minaj and essentially Nicki did not respond she did she said nothing and this diss track was probably one of the most disrespectful records a lot of people have ever heard okay this diss track was seven minutes long it was a seven minute diss track of absolute disrespect she disrespected nikki to her core she disrespected her as a woman she called her um a prostitute she insulted her family she literally went down the line of men that she accused her of having affairs with she talked about her botched body job um, and her butt implants she talked about nikki's brother being a p-word a child abuser she talked about nikki having ghost writers and she she called her out by name there was no like meg the stallion when she talked about who she was talking about we were all left to make assumptions and then meg, meg the stallion basically said you know a hit dog will holler anyone who this applies to is gonna feel it but she actually didn't call out any names remy ma called out nikki by name and obliterated her it was absolute carnage and even the cover art that she did it was literally a barbie torn apart with blood everywhere and i think the thing that people are ultimately thinking is why did you not respond to remy in the same way that you've gone on with megan and i have some interesting thoughts about that i think first of all Remy Ma is actually about that life like she is a threat and let me explain why first of all for those of you who may not know Remy actually previously had been to prison um for shooting someone <laughs> she was in prison because she got angry and she shot someone um and then Remy Ma's husband is also like a real guy of the street so he's not the type of person that you would really be messing around with and then Remy is an actual battle rapper so when it comes to it, Remy can actually stand on the spot and battle rap you in the moment, okay? So Remy is number one, not afraid to go up against anyone. Number two, in real life, she will actually cause you damage. And number three, because she was here before Nicki Minaj, it would be probably not a good look for Nicki to be coming after Remy in any way like that because what could you even say about Remy? Like she's in a completely different situation. Remy does not have a reputation of sleeping with anyone in the, in the industry aside from her husband. She has a reputation of being a real person and in terms of being someone who you actually don't wanna mess with. And so, and her husband has that same reputation. So I think, I think Remy was just way more of a threat to Nikki. Um, and I think that actually in hindsight, that was probably the best way to deal with it because what would Nikki have come back and said, number one? But then on top of that, as we've seen with Megan now, Nikki, you know, going into her spiral, breaking down, and then coming back with a di with a diss track, it really did, it's not Nikki's style. We, we see this now. As much as she has skills and she can do things, Nikki needs time to think of her bars, to really process what's happening, to put it into a good song and to move forward from there. And I think what happened with Remy Ma is over time, people just kind of moved on. They didn't forget, but they moved on. And what happened was Nikki kind of rose up like a phoenix from the ashes and just carried on producing music and nobody really paid attention to it after a certain point. Now, people will remember it 100%. And when things like this happen, people remember it more. But when it really comes down to it, People moved on from it because Nikki did not respond. She did not take the bait, okay? In this situation, however, Nikki has really made herself look foolish. So how can we learn from this? I mean, this is something that you would think, oh yeah, this only happens in the worldly community. But actually, these things that are going on, these feelings that Nicki Minaj is having, this is something that I believe every artist, whether Christian or not, goes through at one point or another in their lives. This feeling of people don't recognize me 
for who I am. People don't respect me for the contribution I'm making to my field. And people have been disrespecting me for a long time and I've had enough. This is something that we can all actually relate to. And by the way, I am not taking sides in this situation at all. I am not a fan of Megan and I am not a fan of Nikki. But I think that we can look at this and understand how Nikki must be feeling given the fact that this is not the first time somebody has come for her and the drastic reaction and spiraling that she seems to be doing. Um, I think we can all understand where she's coming from. And I think realistically, Nikki has made some drastic errors here. And I'm just gonna go through them so that we can learn from them and know not to do these things. So the first error that I think Nikki has made is not knowing who she is. If you are the queen of anything, and this is your own statement now, if you are saying that you are who you are, you are the queen of rap or you are this established person, you do not need to prove who you are. You are who you are <laughs> and there is no need for you to prove it by trying to respond to somebody in the same way that they have responded to you. And interestingly enough, I think this, and my next point is gonna be linked to pride, but I think I wanted to start with this point because I have seen this in the Christian community regularly and specifically with artists. I have seen a lot of artists put their heart and soul into, for example, their, their own personal music, the worship team in church, plays, productions, you know, baking for the cake, bake stuff, whatever it is. I have seen Christians put their heart and soul into things and people basically take for granted who they are and what they are bringing to the table. And it's so deep because if you are an artist, especially who has been doing this for many years, you really feel underappreciated, um, under, just undervalued in every way. And you feel like you are being completely disrespected. And that is a feeling that can be a justified feeling. If people are really disrespecting you and bear in mind, we're gonna get to the fact that Nikki has actually kind of brought this upon herself. But let's just talk about the feeling of being unappreciated and being disrespected, especially if you are in a situation where you don't necessarily feel like you deserve this because you have been trying to walk the right path. You have been trying to do the right thing and you are just being disrespected. The first thing that you need to know is if you are a child of God, knowing who you are in Christ means you are valuable just being a child of God. You are created in his image and because you are created in his image, you are valuable just based on that, okay? Then when you add your gifting, calling and purpose, you are somebody who is valuable, not just because you are a child of God, but because the things that God has put in you have purpose and have and and create reason for you to be here if we didn't have a purpose on this earth then we would all just go to heaven as soon as we got saved but the fact that we have a purpose and the fact that we are still here means that god still has something for us to do and so if you know that if people do not understand or do not see who you are you don't need to prove it what you need to do is transcend them and let me let me explain this this concept of transcendence for me has been revolutionary and i say this because oftentimes as christians we can feel like we have to stay in a situation when people are treating us badly when they're disrespecting us when they're not treating us the way we deserve we feel like we have to stay there out of guilt or we feel like we have to stay there because we owe this person or whatever, whatever. First of all, that is, that is incorrect. If you are in a situation where you know for a fact that people have disrespected you and bear in mind, this is if you know that God is telling you to move on from this situation. So you might be in a situation where God is actually telling you to stay in that situation because of the fact that he has a plan in the long term and you just need to trust him. But when you feel in your soul 
that it is time for you to move out of a situation or you recognize that people, regardless of who you are and what you've done, you recognize that they are completely disrespecting you and they are completely treating you opposite to how you should be treated. And you know that God is not telling you to stay in that position. You need to move on. And it's funny because I use a lot of the things that God has created in the world to help me understand this principle. So for example, gravity is gravity whether you believe it or not you can literally sit here and be like i don't believe in gravity i believe i can fly i believe i can touch the sky but if you jump off a roof you're going to drop okay that is the facts gravity is gravity now gravity is not bothered whether you believe it's it's real or not gravity is just going to have its effect regardless of your belief okay in the same way the trees are gonna bloom in springtime the birds are gonna fly when the time for seasonal change is here things are going to happen in the order they are supposed to happen in whether or not you believe it so in the same way if you know who you are if you know who god has gifted you to be it is absolutely okay for you as a christian artist to move on without causing a fuss without spiraling out of control you can maybe give a warning but once that warning has been given you don't need to speak anymore you can just move on and be the person that god designed you to be so let me give you an example of this i worked in a place for a long time and essentially this particular boss that I had, had asked, they had asked me what I felt like the company needs in order to improve. I told them that this is what I felt. And essentially, basically they took this as, you know, me being, stepping over the bounds, not um, being respectful. And essentially they tried to use me up for the giftings that I had, but didn't actually want to reward me for anything by, pushing me forward in progression and actually they resented me actually telling them what needed to change in the company rather than taking on board my suggestions and bear in mind the reason they were asking me in the first place is because I had earned that trust I had proven that I was a valuable asset to the company I had done my best I had given everything that I I needed to give to this company and what I found is not only were they disrespecting me and carrying on as if I was not the valuable member of the company that I really was, but then they held this resentment and really tried to hold me down. And essentially what happened was I just moved on from this company. And it's funny because this has happened to me many times over. And I think because I am such an artistic and creative person, and the way God has designed me, I am designed to operate within that. Everywhere I go, I tend to make things better. And that's not because I'm some super amazing person. That should be how you are everywhere you go. If you are a Christian person and you are trying to follow God's will, everywhere you go, things should improve. And it should not be, it doesn't necessarily have to be, I mean, anything that's like super drastic, but you should have a reasonable reputation of being a good person. And if people try to come against you and try to slander you, that slander should be something that is completely based on non-factual evidence because of the fact that you have actually built up a reputation as being a good person so you can only imagine how hurtful it has been for me over the many years that I have done these kind of things and worked in different organizations to see people talk about me or to see them you know resent me for the giftings that I have to see them completely ignore the things that I have put into the company it's been very hurtful for me it has been But what I have learned is that if I'm right, I'm right. It doesn't matter. I am going to be right and they are going to be wrong. So whether I stay in that company long term or not, what I am saying is going to come to pass. And so what I found is every company that I've had an issue with, after I have left or after I have moved to a different section or whatever the situation is, usually the company would end up failing in some way i've uh, i've had at least two different companies that have shut down after i've left because i've given them major advice about how the company needs to improve 
or there will be negative consequences because how they've been operating and they've ended up shutting down because they didn't take that advice or i've had situations where the company everything that i said was going to happen happened and the company is still going but they're going around in circles they're not improving and so where i have come out of the situation and moved up in the world and transcended the boundaries that they put put um, put on me and you know transcended the expectations they had for me they have stayed in the same situation and have not progressed and this is what i have discovered in life if you are doing what is right you do not need to be concerned about anyone coming for your neck <laughs> okay even though they are going to still come you do not need to be concerned about that you just need to rise above it and move on okay and it's interesting because there are so many bible verses where people of god are literally treated disrespectfully they are literally treated awfully and in the end they carry on doing the right thing and then god exalts them so if you look at the story of joseph if you look at the story of david these are people who were literally being persecuted for no reason and god elevated them and lifted them up to be great rulers in their nation because of the fact that they stayed faithful to who they were did what god asked them to do and transcended the situation none of these men were out here trying to prove who they were and making a big fuss about everything they literally struggled they prayed and they moved on according to the way God told them to move, even when nobody believed them. And I think about Joseph specifically because Joseph actually literally did nothing. Like he was trying to do what God told him to do the whole time. He was trying to be a decent person pretty much the whole time. And literally whenever he would talk about what God had told him, people would just be angry. They would be literally angry. They, his brother sold him into slavery. Um, he ended up doing a good job when he got to Egypt after being in slavery and he did nothing but good things. And then, you know, Potiphar's wife lied about him and got him put in prison. Then he just carried on being who he was. And by him being who he was, he was able to essentially rise from the ashes and end up being one of the most powerful men in Egypt. And so what I'm saying is you are designed for what God has designed you for, regardless of whether or not people acknowledge it or appreciate it in any way, shape or form. Okay. You need to understand that first of all. Second of all, you need to have humility in what you are doing. Part of the reason that this whole situation is Nicki Minaj's own fault is because this girl has put herself on such a pedestal by talking about the fact that she's the queen and she's the best and nobody can come against her and this that, and the next thing and you know throwing subliminal insults at other people and doing all of this madness like when you think about the rap industry the whole rap industry for the most part is a very creative and amazing industry in the fact that when you think about the music they make and the lyrics they use however this concept of hype and hyping up yourself and saying how amazing you are and how great you are it really does not yield good results for a lot of rappers like when you think about some of the greatest diss tracks there have ever been you immediately kind of think of tupac and biggie and they're dead now like when you take a minute to think about it when rap goes sour it always ends up being that somebody is actually physically hurt that somebody's actually physically damaged that there is actual consequences in this situation because of the fact that they are not humble they are literally bragging um and the things that they are portraying are completely ungodly so you cannot expect to have good results when this is what you have sown the bible says you reap what you sow okay do not be deceived god is not mocked for what a man sows that he will reap Nicki minaj has literally her entire career sowed nothing but discord and i'm not going to say that she has done nothing good ever that's not what i mean but in terms of in terms of the way she hypes up herself all of the rappers do this by the way this is not just Nicki minaj many many rappers do this 
and they all end up in a bad way in some way shape or form like when you think about the fact that megan the stallion even got shot in the first place her circumstances were all her doing things that she shouldn't have necessarily been doing and realistically i'm not going to sit here and say oh you know tory lanes isn't to blame yeah he is partially to blame but if you know that you are in a situation, if you know you're doing things you shouldn't be doing, like sleeping with your friend's boyfriend or whatever, you're gonna find yourself in sticky situations. That's the issue, okay? And when it comes down to it, Nicki Minaj has done this her whole career. Like when um, when she came out, I remember her talking about Little Kim and about how Little Kim was washed up and how she was stupid and all of these things. And now Nikki is having the exact same thing happen to her from another female rapper. And multiple, not just one, not just Megan, from Lotto, from Coyla Ray. There have been many young female rappers who have come out and basically treated her with disrespect because she gave no respect when she was coming up. And so i think humility is something that you really need as an artist you really need to understand yes i know who i am and i'm gonna walk in my purpose and calling but i am not going to big myself up as if i am some kind of god that is idolatry at its finest and not only is it idolatry at its finest but it's actually very detestable in the sight of god and it's detestable in the sight of man people really feel a way when you push yourself to a pinnacle that you're talking about yourself and acting like you're better than everyone else because as much as they love to see an icon they love nothing more than to see an icon fall they love nothing more than to see the despair of a situation and you have to admit nikki has definitely put herself in certain situations that are just somewhat troubling so for example people keep talking about her husband well the reason they're talking about her husband is because considering the options that she had people have been completely confused about why she decided to get with like a 10 time felon he has been a problem since before him and nikki ever got married okay and so you have to understand as a musical icon as a mogul this is going to be something that people continuously speak about so humility is a is a large factor in this understanding who you are in christ is a large factor in this the moral of the story is we need to look at ourselves as artists as christians and decide from the beginning of our career how we want to be perceived do we want to be perceived as successful as godly as instruments that god can use to bring glory to his name or do we want to bring attention to our flaws and our stupidity <laughs> and really every time an artist whether they are christian or not behaves in this manner it does not help them <laughs> it does not help them in any way shape or form if anything it just makes them seem desperate it makes them seem bitter vindictive angry and i don't believe that is who we want to be as christians or as artists or even if you're not a christian watching this i don't believe that is how you want to be perceived so realistically the way we handle ourselves in the world is going to be how we are perceived and we need to remember this every single time somebody makes us angry or upset or refuses to treat us with the respect that we feel we deserve we need to remember in the long run how are you going to be perceived moving forward and yeah i think we can do that guys i think we can actually take our time spend more time focusing on the word focusing on who we are in christ and focusing on what god created us to do rather than focusing on the people who may have wronged us or disrespected us in any way shape or form so yes guys please tell me how i did let me know how you feel about this video let me know if you agree with what i'm saying if you disagree and yeah i will see you in the next one bye